All right, so let's do this. Okay, so Svelte 5, we're in preview mode right now. It's just introducing. Here's some good-looking stuff that's coming out right here. Are you guys excited? You excited for all of this? You should be excited for all this. So introducing runes, rethinking reactivity. You know, again, I just, just so everybody knows, if I wasn't using HTMX, I think at this point in my life, I would probably go Svelte. I've been looking at Svelte on and off for the last about five, six years, and I've just always really liked what they have to offer. And so this is very, very exciting. So in 2019, Svelte 3 turned JavaScript into a reactive language. Svelte is a web UI framework that uses a compiler to turn declarative component like this, right? So you can see right here, you got, you got a little account, function, increment, do this, on click, increment, count, count, into an optimized, a tightly optimized JavaScript that updates the document while... Uh, when state like count changes because the compiler can see where count is referenced and the generated code is highly efficient and because we're hijacking syntax like let and equals instead of using cumbersome APIs you can write less code I actually do like this a lot about it like I like the commitment to just saying you know what F it F the whole thing just F the whole thing if you want if you want it we're going to give you some pretty sweet stuff and so that's what we're doing, right? A common piece of feedback is I wish I could write all my JavaScript like this. When you're used to doing things inside components magically updating, going back to boring procedural code feels like uh, going from color to black and white. Look at this, whoever wrote this blog post being from England or some shit. I tried to sound as stupid as I can. I feel like if you add or some shit to the end of anything, you instantaneously lower the IQ by 10 10 points, one generation. Svelte 5 changes all that with runes, which unlocked universal fine grain reactivity. Okay, let's check it out. We're going we're gonna to skip over that one. We'll just go into the blog post. Even though we're changing how things work under the hood, Svelte 5 should be a drop-in replacement for almost everyone. Hey, you know what? That's nice that they're letting people know there's going to be potentially a little bit of work. But hey, uh, the new features are opt-in. Your existing components will continue to work. Oh, that's nice. Yet, uh, let's see. We don't yet have a release date for Svelte 5. Sag. Uh, what we're showing you here is work in progress that's likely to change. Nice. Rune. 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 A letter or mark used it, uh, as a mystical or magical symbol. Is Go claiming that UTF-8 is magical? Is that what's actually happening here? Go is just like, that shit's magic. That's the problem. You're using a magic language called UTF-8. Oh, you want more magic? Have you heard of UTF-16? Anyways, let's see. Runes are symbols that influence the Svelte compiler, whereas Svelte today uses let and equals the export keyword and the dollar label. So for those that don't know, you mark something as uh, as reactive by using a dollar label. It's pretty clever because most people don't realize labels exist in JavaScript here. I can give you a quick, you guys want a quick example of, 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 of a label? Uh, most people don't actually know about labels here. We'll just jump in here really quickly. Uh, let's look for the first. Here we go. Uh, I don't even know what this is. Oh, that's a big that's a big file. That's an L file com compiled from whatever it's called here. We'll just go st start up. So you can do something like this. So I can do a uh, I can do like an outer right, and then do for let i equal zero. I has to be less than ten. I plus plus. Do one of those. Add an extra one of those. Yank that. Paste that in here. Do that. And then do nothing right here. Take i uh, in here, i, and make it, what, j? There we go. And if i plus j equals 10, then break outer. So what that does is it effectively says break out of this loop instead of this loop. For those that don't know, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool little experience there. Uh, most people don't know about that. It's available in several languages. Like I've, I've done it in Java. You can do it in C, if I'm not mistaken, C++. Uh, it's a go-to. It's effectively like a go-to. It's a way to do outer loop breaking because what you'll see in a lot of people's code that aren't used to this, they'll have some sort of like if, you know, they'll have some sort of found equals false, right? Let found equals false. And they'll have something like, uh, you know, they'll have something that looks like this, right? That's like found equals uh, I plus a J uh, is equivalent to 10. And then have if found, you know, then they'll have if found break or some shit like that, right? I don't know. You've seen things like this, right? Where you're trying to control an outer loop break from the inside. So that's the whole point. So what Svelte does, since no one actually does that, because that's crazy programming, right? Since no one actually does that, they use the label to tell the compiler that this label denotes reactivity, which is actually pretty smart, right? State equals zero, increment, ba da da ba 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 For example, uh, to declare a piece of reactive state, we can use the state rune. There you go. Shazam. State rune. That's a, that's a rune. That's a rune of statefulness. Here, let's see it here. We can pop that out. I'll show it to you just really quickly. Where'd that thing pop out at? So that, there you go. So it's using a label 
label reactive double equals this. So now when this thing gets changed, it automatically does it, right? It just automatically updates the dot. It's pretty clever. It's a pretty clever use of JavaScript syntax, valid JavaScript syntax, to help make uh, your compiler work. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's pretty clever. Um, so instead, we're going to do this, state rune. So we're going to go back to a function, it looks like. At first glance, this might seem like a step back, perhaps even unsvelt-like. Isn't it better if we can have let's down? Yeah. So to me, this does seem more like, what are you, trying to be like React or solid? What is this? Well, no, the reality is that as the application grows in complexity, figuring out which values are reactive and which aren't can get tricky. The, uh, let's see, and the heuristic only works for let declarations at the top of the component, which can cause confusions. Having code behave one way inside of .svelte files and another way in .js can make it hard to refactor code. For example, if you need to turn something into a store so that you can use it in multiple places. Okay, fair. Fair. Beyond components. With runes, reactivity extends beyond boundaries of your .svelte files. Suppose we wanted to encapsulate our counter logic in a way that we could be used between components. Today, you'd have to do a custom store in a .js or .ts file. You get a little store. You have to create a counter. You have to have this whole thing. Then you have to return this. Yeah, okay. Ew. Ugh. Yuck. So simplicity is not necessarily good. Sim Simplicity, ultra simplicity may not always be good because you can't extend it beyond certain scope. So this one's actually just saying, hey, let's extend it beyond certain scope. Because it implements the store contract, the return value has a subscribe method, which can be referenced uh, the store value by prefixing the store with a dollar name. Okay, good. There you go. Create counter. Do all this thing. Increment counter. Counter. See, like, that's a lot. Plus, you have this whole, like, dollar thing going on. I don't like that at all. Like, to me, that's grody. To me, that's grody to do. Not a fan. Not a fan of having to do some sort of magic right there. Let's see, it works, but it's pretty weird. We found that the store API can get rather unwieldy when you start doing more complex things. With runes, it gets much simpler. State, bam. Okay, I mean, I like that. I like what we're seeing here. I like what we're seeing here. Counter count, I also like seeing that. That's nice. So it looks like it's just like a more convenient store item. That's all it looks like. So does that mean you can still, it seems like that means you can still use the, the dollar sign reactivity label if you want to in a Svelte file. And you can also use this as a clear designation that you're using something as a uh, dollars to PHP. Come on, but they also have Lambos. Is it really that bad? Is it really that bad? Let's see, today, Svelte uses compile time reactivity. This means that if you have some code that uses uh, the dollar label to rerun automatically when dependencies change, those dependencies are determined when Svelte compiles your component. Export with height, compiler knows area equals this. And let's see, that, it should log the value area when it changes. Console log area. Nice, beautiful. Well, this works well until it doesn't. Suppose you refactor the code above. Multiply by with height is a function. Multiply by width. Because area, oh, this is a function and function doesn't change. Declaration can only see width. It won't be recalculated when the height changes. Yeah, we got, we got ourselves a little bit of a goof here, right? Multiply by height. If you, if you sneak in something, it doesn't change. Okay, yeah, I could see that being very, that'd be frustrating. As a result, the code is hard to refactor, and understanding the intricacies of when Svelte chooses to update which values can become rather tricky beyond certain levels of complexity. Svelte 5 introduces derived and effect runes, uh, which instead determine the dependencies of their expression when they're evaluated. All right, area equals derive, these two. Okay, okay, props instead of let export, okay, interesting. Uh, effect, oh, we're getting kind of into a weird area, but okay. Okay, so effect is every time things change with area. Hmm. I wonder if I like this. I wonder if I like this. I feel like we're getting, we're getting close. We're slowly getting back to PHP. The problem is, is I'm always worried about, like the thing I love about Svelte is that, you know, client side reactivity was very simple when you need just some basic reactivity. I still love the idea that everything is largely driven from the server. And so this feels like you're, it just encourages people to write more code on the client which I am not a fan of. Signal Boost. Uh, like every other framework, we come to the realization that Knockout was right all along. Yes, Knockout has been right all along. Svelte 5's reactivity is powered by signals, which are essentially what Knockout was doing in 2010. More recently, signals have been polarized or popularized by Solid and adopted by a multitude of other frameworks. Yep, React still does dumb signals. You state! That's the signal that you pass it around. You pass... It's rendering order. You state! 
Cool dog. Uh, we're doing things a bit differently, though. In Svelte 5, uh, signals are an under-the-hood implementation detail rather than something you interact with directly. Uh, as such, we don't have the same API design constraints and can maximize both efficiency and ergonomics. For example, we avoid the type narrowing issue that arises when values are accessed by function call, and when compiling in server-side rendering mode, we can ditch the signal altogether, since the server, they are nothing but overhead. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Signals unlocked fine grain reactivity, meaning that, for example, changes to the value inside a large list doesn't uh, or needn't invalidate. What a weird word, needn't. Uh, needn't invalidate the other members of that list. Such uh, as such, Svelte Five is redonkulously fast. Beautiful. Needn't. I mean, I know what it stands for. People that whomst with whom. Uh, runes are an additive feature, but they make a whole bunch of existing concepts obsolete. The difference between let at the top level of a component and everywhere else, export let, dollar with its attended quirks, different be uh, behavior between script and script context module, uh, store API and parts that are, which are genuinely quite complicated, uh, the dollar store prefix, dollar dollar prop and rest prop, uh, Lifecycle functions, things like on mount, can just be effect functions. Okay. For those of you who already use Svelte, it's new stuff to learn, albeit hopefully stuff that makes your Svelte apps easier to build and maintain. But newcomers won't need to learn all those things. It'll just be a section of the docs titled Old Stuff. Okay. It's just the beginning, though. We have a long list of ideas, subsequent releases that will make Svelte simpler and more capable. Okay. Anyways, here's some good stuff. Svelte 5 is not production yet, it's not there yet, but hey. Join their Discord. If you have any things, you can create a preview site. You can go check out the preview site, which is pretty cool. I like all this. I, I mean, I like, I, in general, I like Svelte quite a bit. I still think Svelte is one of the nicer front-end frameworks. If I'm going to do a front-end framework, I really like Svelte. If I'm not using Svelte, I will use Solid. If I'm not using Solid, I, I guess I could try out Vue. If I'm not using Vue, I'm going to take a coin and I'm going to flip the coin, and if it lands on heads, it will be angular, and if it lands on tails, I'll use React, but when the coin lands, I will also quit my job. So you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Does that make sense? And by the way, of course, what I mean by all that is that uh, you use HTMX first. I would always use HTMX first. I would always use HTML. You're quiet. Quit. No, no, I would just loud quit. I would just just leave. I would first choose the framework and then leave. Can you use Rust with HTMX? Absolutely. HTMX makes no designation on your server. Anyways, there's a drinking game called Prime, Drink with Prime. Every time I mention Go and HTMX, you have to take a drink. So guess what? The name is the Drunkagen. <laughs>